Who would have guessed that when you try and pull 350 watts out of a desktop CPU, you're going to run into stability issues? Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and as the resident Intel fanboy, I think I need to weigh in on the Intel stability issues that are plaguing a lot of people. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a lot of people with NVIDIA GPUs and Intel CPUs were claiming stability issues. NVIDIA was quick to go out and say, look, this is an Intel issue, and this is affecting 13th and 14th gen i9s. And I mean, think about it, it's a 24 core CPU, like it runs hot. It's a desktop CPU. And we all know Intel really does just pull a lot of power on these. If you run one of these things stock, like you're going to pull 350 watts in Cinebench. Not really well for gaming. I actually mentioned this before back in my 1400KS review. Um, my first look, sorry. But I was playing Call of Duty and like I just had like 180 watts on stock playing COD. Not something very sustainable. Like... It's one thing for like a GPU to pull that much power, but like for a CPU, it can't really do that. And so what's really causing these stability issues is that there is a high temperature. Temperature is going to cause degradation no matter what. It's just going to especially accelerate that. For example, if you run a, let's say you have two 1400 KSs and you run one at 6.2 gigahertz at 50 C all day, and then you have one running at 6.2 gigahertz at 90C, the one at 90C is going to degrade and probably die in like a year. Well, the 50C might run for three, four years, ready to your next upgrade. If you can run 6.2 gigahertz on a 1400KS though, like let me know and just ship it out to me. But let's actually take a look at some news articles now, as well as some things I do recommend to kind of fix this issue. And we are going to give my potential fix. All right, starting off here, this is the video cards article where they are talking about how NVIDIA is telling people to go to Intel to fix their crashing issues. Something you normally don't see. As you can see, this is a Intel link here. If you open it up, it will, let's see, can I click on it? No, this isn't actually like a link, this is just an image. Interesting. But obviously these CPUs do run hot. And a lot of this does have to do as well with the manufacturers. Someone such as Asus was increasing the power limits to over 320 watts stock as kind of Intel's like high end power limit technically, but it still is very hot. So Z790 boards did actually get a BIOS update this week. And what they got was you went from something like this, which supports the 14900KS to something that introduces Intel's baseline profile as you can see right here what is intel's baseline profile it's basically just kind of like a fail safe i actually did have someone in my discord send me some information that he kind of did know, like what his own testing was and he kept like hardware info running for like five something hours it was like five gigahertz average like 5.5 gigahertz max like I get like maybe if you're running something like Prime 95 all day, maybe you'd like lower the clock speeds, but he was just playing games, chilling on the desktop, kind of is an issue. So this Intel baseline profile was turning his 14900KS into a stock 1300K, something that you do not want. So for someone who is thinking this Intel baseline profile is my only option, what am I going to recommend to do to kind of mitigate this issue i think the first thing you need to do is just focus on your cooling we are going to go over some temperature monitoring and some testing soon but i'm just going to say honestly just go straight and get a brand new liquid cooler if you have a high-end 360 millimeter already don't worry about this i'm a big fan of the thermal right frozen not 360 it's 63 dollars sometimes you get these on sale for like 50 bucks um it connects through SATA power to your pump if you want. So it runs at 100% all the time, something like 5,300 RPM. It's insanely good. Um, another one, if you want like a little more high quality one, would be like a deep cool. If you aren't wanting to get like the frozen knot, or if you're like, you know, like this isn't that good, get something like this if you're willing to like go and like void your warranty. It's $193, $183. You do lose your warranty. But this will directly cool your chip and drop temperatures a good bit. This was made with Derbauer, so really do respect that. 
Um, another one could be something like a deep cool or the EK nucleus non direct dye. But I'm going to say for most people, the frozen knot is perfect, especially when you mix it with something like KPX. This is the best thermal paste. I buy like, I buy it by like the palette basically because I use it on everything. I think that this is really good thermal paste. Um, but like thermal paste, AIO, like those are really important, but just a simple, super cheap fix. It's just getting something like a thermal right frame for $8. You can get one of these. It will drop your temps by out five, six C make sure your CPU isn't going to bend. And I'm typically going to recommend though, get the one with the thermal paste. Then you don't really have to worry about getting the KPX. This is really good thermal paste. Actually, people really do like this. It is kind of a little thick, so it's hard to spread. But if you bought a 1400K, any kind of high end i9, you can afford to spend $10 on a contact frame. Definitely something I'd recommend doing. But okay, 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 Chamber. Like you told us what to buy, but what happens if, like, you know, we can't afford this, but we just want to drop our temperatures? We're going to be using Prime 95 to test. Prime 95 is free, and this is just something super easy to download, super We'll go over how to run it as well. And then for temperature monitoring, download something like hardware info. This just lets you look at all your temperatures. But now I'm going to switch over to my phone. And we are going to take a look at stock temperatures. And then we're going to go over how to kind of undervolt the CPU and limit it a little bit. And then get you those low, low temperatures. Desktop. So I'm just going to start off by opening Prime 95. Just as a reminder, I do want to say this. If this breaks your CPU, not my fault, be warned, but you should be fine, especially if decent cooling. So we're going to open up hardware info as well while we're at it. Of course, I like missed it, but there we go. Hardware info, start. If you ever missed the, the test screen, go to advanced and not that one. Advanced. Sorry, options, torture test. and. Keep my hardware info open on the side just so we can see temperature. So here we go. 5.9, 4.5. This is the stock 1400 KS. Looking like we're running at 26, 27 watts. This is with hyperthreading enabled. And let me see. Um, I guess that's actually really all we have to see. So we're just going to start off with a large FFT test. This is more RAM. Does kind of stress your CPU a little bit. So let's see that package temp. Give it some time, 52. Okay. Oh, look, there we go, 184 watts, 50 C. See, frozen knot, goaded. But now let's just switch the torture test up to small FFTs. This is like the heaviest workload. And it crashes. Hmm. So my honest opinion on stress test is I'm not saying you need to be like Linpack four days stable. I think that you need to be something like you can run it for a minute at least. If you can run like a super duper heavy workload for a minute, typically fine. Um, shaders are really, really heavy to compile. If you ever played COD and you've like reinstalled your graphics driver, there's a new season update. Those shaders compilations are very heavy. So let's kind of talk about my ideas on what I'm going to be doing to fix this issue. I will be disabling hyperthreading, so that means that instead of having 24 cores and 32 threads, you're just going to have 24 cores and 24 threads. If you are doing something like streaming on your CPU with the same PC, if you are having like a bunch of background tasks, but typically I don't have this issue, I'll have like videos in the background, Discord, music, I don't have any issues. But maybe if you're running like a render, like a CPU render, if you're doing heavy multi-core things and you know what you're doing, don't disable hyperthreading. Follow every other setting. But for 99% of you guys who are gamers, disable hyperthreading, get a little bit higher performance as well. Let's go to the BIOS though. For those of you who have never been to a BIOS before, congrats. But right click restart, and you're just going to spam the delete key. For me, I have a small 60%, so I'm just going to hit function and backspace and get into the BIOS. Here you are in the BIOS. Depending on your motherboard manufacturer, it will look just a little bit different. I am in. A gigabyte. This is my tachyon, so it might look different depending on who you have. But I'm just gonna go straight to the advanced mode. This is where we want to go. So the first thing I am going to recommend is that you do go straight to your performance core ratio. 
this might be called something else, P cores, performance cores, and set them to whatever your stock is. So if you have a 1400KS, do 59 right there. If you have something like a 1400K, it's 57. I believe that's the same thing on the 13900KS. Maybe it's 56. And then 55 for a 13900K. I have a 1400KS though because I'm big balling like that. 49. Um, for efficiency CPU ratio, do 45 for me. 44 on a on a 1400K. 43 on 1300K and 1300KS. I'll put them up on the screen for you guys. Uh, ring ratio, we can just leave this on auto. It's typically going to be anywhere from like 4.4 gigahertz to 4.6. This isn't really going to be what we're worrying about. You just go straight to advanced CPU ratio though. Or advanced CPU settings. This might be in a different tab. If you're on Asus, I know it is. It's on like instead of like the AI tweaker tab. It's in the advanced CPU configuration. We're going to start off by going to hyper threading. Disable. Drop power, honestly, by like 30%. So, let's keep going down. Going down, 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 down. And one thing I'm going to recommend, disable under voltage protection. This is for like certain like programs would like try and undervolt things, kind of as like a virus. As long as you keep your PC clean, you're fine. And we can actually undervolt. While we're at this AVX settings, I'm a big fan of setting a zero AVX offset just because I don't like having an AVX workload, which is a lot of things at this time, down clocking my CPU. Um, active turbo ratios, we don't have to touch this one. We can leave all our cores enabled, we pay for them. Um, C states control, if you want to, you can disable C1 states um, to enable your turbo package power limit. So all I want to do is I just want to spam nine on all of them or just max them out. So just max out everything. Do you can spam nine, you have to like hit enter go to the bottom of the list and we're going to do this all for the package which is the cpu and then the other one that i am going to mention as well is just cpu core current limit amps let's just make sure all the amps if you do want to limit these to something like more reasonable like for example let's say you're like okay i'll let my cpu get a little hot at times so you max it out at like 300 watts um the package the times i'm going to recommend that you max out these, the platform ones, aren't as important on Gigabyte. These are only like Gigabyte ones, the DRAM one. DRAM, like, it doesn't get hot. Like, what does DRAM pull? Six watts. Um, turbo limits, you can set this to enable and max all these out. But for the sake of this video, we're still leaving this on auto because it really does not matter. And that's all. Now, go down. And I want you to see your V-Core voltage mode. So all we're going to do is we're just going to go straight to adaptive V-Core. Um, and I'll just do a legacy. So we want to do a offset. So we're undervolting, lowering the voltage for typically for like every other motherboard manufacturer, but gigabyte, you just have to set negative and then like type in like negative 0 0.1. Don't do 0 0.1. That's pretty hard. We're just going to do a simple 0 0.025. There we go. Internal CPU V core normal. Now this number will be different depending on your motherboard manufacturer and just what kind of motherboard do you have in general? I say start at negative 0 0.01. If this passes whatever test you want to run for like whatever amount of time you want. If this passes your test and it's all good in games, you can keep allowing it to like zero, negative 0 0.02. Just keep dropping it by 0 0.01. But I'm just going to go straight to 0 0.025. This is typically what I found a lot of CPUs can do. Some will not be able to do this, just be fair. But then we're going to go to our save and exit tab, save and exit setup, hit yes. Now let's move back into Windows. Now that we are back in Windows, let's actually see now if we can even run small FFT. So open up Prime 95 now, run and small FFTs, hit OK, OK. And look, 5.9, 4.5. Four point like five on the ring as well. Seventy seven degrees, eighty six max. Okay, super low temperatures here. Three hundred and thirty watts. So this is still high. This is very high wattage. I'm gonna be honest. But at least you can like run the test. Um. Also, if you're not gonna be running this all the time, like you're gonna be running a hundred watts most of the time in a game. Hundred watts is all you need. So definitely. 
this is a success, something I'm going to recommend. Also, it just went down to 300 watts, so, like, it's variable. It's not going to run on any, like, super high wattage all the time, um, even in tests like these. So, this is what I'm going to recommend that we do. Let's just do that. Make sure you don't get any blue screens as well. Run it for, like, probably, like 30 minutes. But if this... Sorry, this is short, by the way. Like, I'm dipping out of prison, if you know the joke. But um, I am, uh, like, trying to get this out really soon for you guys. I have a lot more content coming soon. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Hit the like button down below. Subscribe. Join the Discord if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.